Hey everyone, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. Look how shiny this is. This is a bar stool with epoxy. Um, watch the video all the way through. It'll take you guys the step the step by step process. Um, this first clip is filmed 24 hours later after I epoxied it last night. Um, it's all dry and good to go. Really nice and smooth, glassy, really nice. So definitely stay tuned. All right, guys. So I have a um, basic stool here that I had under the house, and um, as you guys can see, it's pretty dirty. It's kind of got weathered and kind of been beat up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and refinish this top real quick with some epoxy. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, is I'm going to sand this down. So I'm going to show you guys, you know, the current finish. Right? It's really dirty and. Um, even the clear coat that was on here, the original clear coat that came with this was pretty beat up and worn down. Um, so I just got my um, sander right there. I'm going to go ahead and take it down to the finish to make it um, the nicer finish here. Uh, I am using a um, heavier grit right now. I believe I'm using the 80 grit. Uh, and then I'm going to switch up to 150 grit. Uh, and then we'll see where we're at. And then if I need to go to 220 grit, we'll do that as well. Um, but as we sand it down, uh, it'll start changing on us a bit here. So I'll just do a little bit here, show you guys what's going on. So yeah, we're obviously changing the, the top here, taking off that muck. Um, you can see I have a little bit here, of course. Um, but yeah, it feels, feels a little rough because I am using a um, heavier grit. But I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up on the tripod here. And I'll cut back in and I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding this out with the different grits to kind of get down to where I want to be. And then uh, I'm, of course, going to go ahead and sand the edge here. Um, I won't be epoxying the bottom here for now. I just want to do the top and the reason we're going to do this is for one to change it up a little bit make it look nice um, but um, I'm actually going to end up epoxying this a different color down the road um, so this is going to change a different couple different um, styles and colors um, as we go on here but I want to start off with just a basic epoxy just to expose the wood grain in here and everything <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch my pad to a different grit. I'm going to leave this on the side because I'm going to use this to scuff up the, the rounded side. Now, I don't want to really use the sander too much on the rounded side. So I'm switching out to a different um, pad here. smooth now that's crazy so yeah I'll move it from that wow that feels real smooth 
Um, that, yeah, I'm gonna probably go over it one more time with the same um, sending pad because it looks like it's all smooth except for about this area right here. But I'll go, we'll go ahead and address this right now. And then um, I'll take the same pad by hand and round off and clean up the edges. All right, everyone, we're back. Um, it is the next day. I had to do some things. Uh, so what I did was I actually um, scrubbed down and watch, washed the base because I'm actually going to paint the base a different color. Um, so what I did was I taped off um, with just masking tape uh, and some paper. That way, when it runs or drips, it doesn't get on everything. And I have some on the floor to kind of catch whatever you know falls on there. Um, so the surface is all prepped, sand it nice and smooth. I got my clean sponge brush. You can use a roller, a paintbrush, whatever you want, really. Um, but yeah, this surface is ready. Um, I'm over here getting ready to mix the epoxy So what I have here is three three basic cups here and what I did was let me show you inside of the cup There is a mark right there and there's a mark on This one so I took a measurement with a uh, with my little measurement um, measuring tool there um, to give me a certain depth right so that way I could have equal parts because this is uh, mixed together a and b equal so one one to one ratio so whatever you put in one cup is what you put in the other cup and mix okay so i'm going to put one mixture in here one mixture in here and then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to pour um, one of these into the next one mix that all up and then pour it into this final cup here and continue mixing that way if i missed anything in these cups but whatever falls in here, you know, we can still continue to mix up. We want to make sure with epoxy that you really mix it up really well. I really need to stress that point. Epoxy has to be mixed well. If you don't mix it well, um, it won't cure right. And you're going to have spots in your surface or your, like your countertop or whatever you're epoxying. It's not, it's not going to dry. So you need to make sure that it's mixed really well. Spend your time mixing it. You can easily mix it for five, ten minutes. Um, just mix it up really good because that's where it's that's where the magic is at is in the mixing okay so i'm going to set you guys up on a little tripod here i'm going to pour um, a and b into each cup mix it up and then we'll go ahead and apply it to the surface um, my goal here is i measured roughly um two inches from the bottom up to my marks so that's going to give me roughly about four inches of this cup once i pour it all into one which will be more than enough to cover that that countertop i mean that um bar stool there so um yeah let's get to it all right, so the epoxy that I'm using, um, you can use any epoxy you want. Um, actually, when I do my countertops for my home, I'm going to be using a different type of epoxy. I'm going to try a different product. This product works great. I've used it many times in the past. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead. As you guys can see, there's some missing in here because I've been using it on different projects. But let's go ahead and mix it up. So I have part A here, right? Um, on these, they have a cap and then they have a plug. So let me show you that. Remove the cap, right? And then here's the plug. So you just pull the plug out. This has been sitting under my house for a little while, but it's okay. It's more than perfectly fine. Let me get the cap out of here. It's a little sticky. There she goes. She's coming out. The plugs are to help prevent rubbish and also keep the, the batch fresh. Okay, so um, just make sure you don't get, drop any dirt in here, so I'm going to be real careful. So I'm just going to fill it up to that line that I have in my cup, and I'm going to stop. So she is a little thick. So I stopped right before my line because I think that's going to be plenty epoxy. I'm going to put my cap back in over here. Okay. 
Then we're gonna do the same thing now on this one. Open up this one, pull this cap out, and do the same thing. Okay, there we go. So I'll go ahead and cap that back off. I'll put the plug in. So now we have A and B in here, okay? So um, I'm gonna pour, because one is more thick than the other, so I'm gonna pour the more runny one, which is actually B, into um, this cup here. And I'm gonna scrape out everything that I can with my mixing stick, which is nice and clean. You'd be surprised how much epoxy is stuck to the inside of your mixing um, vessel or your cup. So go ahead and get what you can. Okay, so now there's A and B in here. So I'm gonna start mixing this up. And then we're gonna pour it into the next cup after we do a, quite a bit of the mixing. Make sure you scrape your edges, the walls of the cup or whatever you're mixing in. Make sure you get the bottom really well. So we're gonna mix this up. Scrape the edges. Okay, so I'm gonna pour this now into the next cup. Just let it pour out. Then we're gonna scrape the inside of this cup. That way we're not wasting any. Oh yeah, there's a bunch coming out. Okay, so these two cups are done and out of the way. Now, we're gonna go ahead and mix this up really well. Scrape the sides. Oh yeah, she's mixing up good now. And don't worry about the bubbles that's in, in the um, epoxy, because when you pour it out, um, you, you'll have a chance to um, pop the bubbles with a torch, which is what we're gonna do. Um, but ideally, if you're doing like a really big project or a batch, you really wanna try to prevent as much bubbles getting into the epoxy. Um, that way it's just less for you to have to worry about when you're um, popping the um, all the bubbles with a torch. Clean the edges. Clean my stick. All right. All right. So we're gonna come over here to the workpiece. I'm gonna keep mixing it a little bit more, of course. Let me get you guys on the work piece here. Get it, get it to focus, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna keep mixing it up here. Okay, I think we're about there, because this is such a small batch. If you're doing a bigger batch, of course, you're gonna mix a little bit longer. 
um, but this is such a small surface and this is a lot of epoxy for just that. Okay, so let me clean off my stick here. Okay, and I'm just gonna lay the stick on the paper I have down there. And give me one second here. All right, so I have my torch on standby. I'm using a propane torch. So we'll put that on the side. Let me get you guys right over the piece here. Right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and apply the epoxy now. And um, we're just gonna start with a small little st um, stream in the middle here. Okay, so I'm not gonna put all the epoxy in. Okay, we're gonna start with that and we're gonna spread that out. Get the, the sponge primed up a little bit here. Let's get that moving around the surface here. We're not gonna push it over the edge yet. We're gonna just go ahead and help the material spread out here. I really like epoxy. It's some really good stuff. There we go. Kind of help spread it out. And it is self-leveling, but we want to get it um, to cover all the surface really well. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish our little edges over here. And the key with epoxy is really not to mix more than you need because... The epoxy is, of course, um, you know, can be expensive depending on the size of the project you're doing. So um, try not to um, mix more than you absolutely need. So we're going to go ahead and pour the rest right here in the middle. Get it out of there. We're also going to scrape the inside because we changed cups, right? So it's all mixed up really well. And we're going to go ahead and clean off the stick. Okay, and get this out of here. Okay, so now you guys can see she's turning into pretty much glass almost, but we still have some ways to go. So now we're going to bring some of the puddle over the edge here and we're going to start making sure we cover our edge. Because remember, there's enough on here to make sure we get it all. Make sure you get it all good. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling the material from the middle out to make sure I go all the way around my edges here really well. Oh, yeah. The one thing about it, I like about epoxy, man, it can turn anything into like a very nice piece of anything, art, you know? But also it waterproofs everything very well. And a general rule as far as if you're wondering how much epoxy to mix in general, as you guys can see, I have the perfect amount here. And um, usually the general rule is three ounces per square foot. So that's a really good um, number to kind of go off of. And see, so you guys can hear it dropping on the paper below. 
and that's why I tape it all off. That way, when it does drip, we're not gonna damage the rest of the workpiece here. Oh yeah, she's looking really good, guys. Really good. So I'm just making sure I catch the, the edges really well. She's gonna help, she's gonna self-level herself. Okay, so that's gonna be good for, for just now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the torch on to kind of get the um, <clears throat> the bubbles popping. And not only that, it helps the material flow a little bit more. So I'm gonna turn it down, we don't need it that high. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you guys are standing where I was standing, I could see all the bubbles popping like just, it's coming like super smooth. I'm gonna get all of everything. Oh yeah, looking real good guys. Okay, so we're gonna turn off the torch and um, I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod so I can show you guys the the shine on this. Look at that. So you can see it dripping. So when you heat up the material, get it warmer, she wants to, she becomes more um, liquidy. She wants to run more. And that's okay. All you're gonna do as time goes on here is come back around and catch your drips. Catch all the drips you can. Oh yeah, guys, this is nice. Okay, so we're gonna let it sit up for a little bit because I can see more bubbles coming to the surface. Now I should point out that you can actually layer this, okay? So the first coat, you wanna just cover things to seal the wood. Um, this, after that's done, you can wait 24 hours for it to cure completely. Um, do a light sanding of 220 grit, uh, and then apply your next second coat, okay? Because when you apply your second coat, the first coat already sealed the wood, so you won't have any more bubbles coming up besides the bubble that the bubbles that you may have in the epoxy when you're mixing it. <clears throat> so we're going to let it, give it a chance here, a chance here to kind of um, whatever bubbles need to come up to the surface. Um, we'll let it do that, then we're going to go ahead and torch this two more times at least, maybe four times total. But look at that, guys. She's looking really nice. And I'm going to paint the legs um, black. So that's okay if she's running off the edge, let, let her do her thing. Um, and then we're gonna come back with the sponge again and catch the runs, the drips. And the reason we're doing that is to keep the epoxy from building up on the bottom and drying in a lump. Cause it's like gonna be like a drip and you're gonna be able to feel it. So like you see this right here, how that, how that looks right there and dripping. You get the focus, right? So what you do is, as time goes on here, with your work piece, you just come back, with your, with your sponge or your um, whatever you're using to um, spread the material around. Yeah, just to catch it. So yeah, not too bad. I could have used a little bit less epoxy, um, but I was kind of doing a heavier coat on this one. And like I said, when you heat it up, um, she wants to become a little bit more um, runny, which is fine. Yeah, I guess if you look at it at a certain angle, you can see the bubbles. I know it's super glassy, right? It's hard to see, but if you look at different angles with the reflection, you can you can kind of see some popping up here and there, and that's fine. We'll let it do its job. And then, um, in fact, let's get the torch going here.
And the key is to keep the torch moving. Don't stay in one spot too long. Turn off the torch. And as you can see now, since I start torching it, get the camera to focus for us, she wants to run a little bit more. And that's okay. We're just gonna keep touching her up. It's all self-leveled already. That's why she's kind of pushing out all the extra on the edges. And that's why you wanna put the first coat on a little bit light and spread it out first, so that way you can get it over the edges. And then when she self-levels, She'll just basically run right over the edge. <clears throat> and I should also point out another key thing here is um, making sure your surface, um, everything you're doing is very um, clean. So if we look at the at an angle here, you kind of see those little spots popping up on the surface. I'm trying to show you guys with the reflection. See right right there right see those bubbles that's okay that's why we're going to torch it to bring out the bubbles so we'll let this sit for another couple minutes here she looks really good though and now the thing is because this is such a small project i can easily mix up um, a second coat to do that second coat. So like I said, you can do the first coat to seal everything. Especially with porous wood, the air wants to keep coming through. Um, so doing a first um, coat to seal it is a really good idea. And then come back once it's dry and lightly sand everything and put your second coat on. And not only what does, what does it do, do, does it makes the um, shine even deeper because you're having that extra layer on top of everything. And now you guys see why I have the paper there. So I'm not making a mess everywhere. And the other key too is making sure your surface is level. Um, because if your surface is not level, the material is going to want to run certain, certain ways. Yeah. So try to make it level as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna torch it another time. And you know what? Um, if I need to put a second coat on in 24 hours, I can do that, not a big deal. Let's see if you guys can see these bubbles popping. I can see them popping. The torch is honestly the best way. If you use a heat gun, you can use a heat gun, but it's, I don't find it as being as effective as a torch. I can see more bubbles coming to the surface. That's fine. Let me try to get you guys another angle here. Sorry about the shaky camera, guys. So we'll let it do its thing. Here's a good thing about uh, most of these type of epoxy, especially for like countertops and stuff like this is um, the working time on it is actually pretty long. Um, it's not like it just cures and dries in like 10, 15 minutes. Um, you easily got, I mean, it depends on how much you're mixing and how thick, um, but you do have a, quite a long time as far as working time. So we're just gonna let it run off, let it do its thing, let it settle down. And then, um, We'll just keep an eye on it. 
In a little bit, I'm going to catch the um, drips again. And then we're going to go ahead and torch it again. And we're just kind of rinsing and repeat here. All we're doing is just trying to fine tune her up. So I'm just catch all these um, runs here. Yep. And we'll do the other side over here. Sorry about the shaky camera guys, but I'm trying to give you guys all the angles I can so you guys can see what I'm doing. And this does make your workpiece 100% waterproof, wherever the epoxy is. Of course, underneath, where in the middle of the workpiece, you know, underneath the surface, on the bottom of it, of course, there's no epoxy, right? So that wouldn't be waterproof. But you technically could waterproof the, um, the whole thing. I did some work pieces about a couple years ago, and those pieces are still being used today. And it looks just like the day that I, I put it together with the epoxy. It looks like brand new, like glass. Yep, so I'm just checking to make sure there's no rubbish in there. There we go. <clears throat> we'll do a quick torch again. And um, if you guys are working indoors um, or you don't have, you know, really good ventilation, um, try to find an epoxy that has um, zero VLC. Um, that'll really help you out so that there's, you know, no smell really. Um, there's no um, chemical smell of any sort. Um, this one here does have, let me take a look at the bottle. Because this one does have a light epoxy smell. Um, but I do have the windows behind us open. Let's see. On this bottle, it does not tell us the. Let's see. So the only thing that is indicated on this bottle is basically it says um, colder temperatures can affect the performance of this product. Please do not use product if temperature is below seventy-five degrees Fahrenheit. So um, that's something to think about as well. If you're in a cold, um, cold climate, uh, you want to make sure that. Um, you in the working temperature because it can um, definitely alter the way your workpiece comes out and how the epoxy cures and dries. <clears throat> Very nice and shiny. Yeah, she's finally settling down. We don't have too much runoff anymore, dripping. So yeah, she's settling down. <clears throat> now, here's another thing I should point out is that, you know, not only can you do multiple layers, but you can also change the color completely. If you don't want this natural wood, like say, you know, in a year or whatever, I don't like this. Um, I can easily rough the surface down, mix up a, um, either paint or I can actually um, mix up uh, a color to mix into the epoxy. So instead of it have, have, um, being clear, I can have white, black, blue, red, you know, whatever. Um, and that could be the color. And then we could also mix in different colors to kind of give you a color scheme you know, you can be really fancy and creative with this stuff. So definitely stick around guys, because I want to be doing my, I want to be doing 160 square feet of countertops with epoxy. And we're going to be doing it with um, clear as the flood, flood coat, but we're also going to be using colors. We're going to use formica um, flakes. We're going to use glitters. We're going to use all kinds of stuff. We're going to use colors. So it's going to get really, really nice and um, be a really nice project. So definitely stick around for that. Um, I do have some other epoxy videos if you want to look through my channel, um, talking about and showing you guys how I've done some other some other projects. I don't know if you notice you can't hear any more drips anymore. Right, that slowed down. Everything's kind of just leveled out now. 
So let's go ahead and do another torch. Oh yeah, I can see all the bubbles going. And the good thing about epoxy, guys, is, you know, um, it's workable, right? So even if you have some bubbles and stuff like that, don't worry about it. <clears throat> you know, you, you want to do your best to get them out, obviously. But, you know, in, in the end when it cures and you have some bubbles and stuff, no big deal. Do a light sanding and you can do another coat. And then you'll guarantee almost have no bubbles as long as you don't mix too much into the actual, when you're mixing the epoxy itself, right? And I do believe most epoxies is a one-to-one um, -one ratio, but you want to make sure you read the recommendations for whichever epoxy you're using. So I'm just going to run my sponge around the bottom one more time here. Catch whatever might be residuals. Yeah, she's getting there. That's good. Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> Try to get the camera to focus. Look how shiny that is. That's the one thing about this. It really brings out the wood grain. Like you can, it really starts to make it pop, which is really nice. And you could, you could actually epoxy anything. You could, um, like here's an example. You could put a picture, okay? Like, or even a sticker, whatever you wanted on the surface and epoxy over and it's part of the workpiece, right? So you get, you can get pretty creative with this stuff. <clears throat> So I think I'm going to torture it maybe two more times um, because I can see some bubbles coming up. But we're basically at the end stage here. After this, we're just going to let it sit up over here um, overnight, um, 24 hours at least. If you can sit, let it sit up for 48 hours, better, um, before you want to you start messing around with it. <clears throat> so, yeah. Tell me what you guys think about this project. Um, I really like working with epoxy. It's a really fun, fun product. Um to kind of work with and be more creative. I mean, the top of this guy's was in really bad shape, right? And now look at it, it's like completely repurposed. Then of course we're gonna paint the legs and that's gonna transform the rest of it. So anyway, I'll give you guys a clip tomorrow because we're pretty much done here. I'm just gonna go ahead and torch it maybe one more or two more times and catch any drips or runs. And that's pretty much it guys. And then tomorrow we'll see where we're at and I'll give you guys an update on what it looks like tomorrow.